So he says, go back up in that room and shoot the ceiling. What? Why? Oh, come, why would I know that? Why would anyone know to do that? They wouldn't. They f***ing wouldn't. Crap, Bush League. What? This should not get a pass. Uh, I'm sorry, it's crap. Utter horse. All right, so you come into the room on the bottom left side. The camera is positioned in a way that gives Samus a lot of headroom, so clearly the game wants you to be looking at what's above you. Dread is actually super clever about using the composition of the shot to draw your eye in the direction it wants you to look. The only thing on the lower floor is a collectible that's pretty easy to grab, so there's not much to do down here. On the platform above you, however, there are a bunch of enemies crawling around. The platform itself has this step in the middle which creates these diagonal lines, so the geometry of this room is basically a giant arrow pointing right at the ceiling. At the tip of that point, there's this orange window full of lava. You know, it's only the biggest, brightest thing in the whole room. That window actually extends through the gap, so it visually ties these two areas together. And hey, it just so happens to be the exact width of the hidden blocks! What a silly coincidence! But it doesn't stop at just making the ceiling a point of interest. You've encountered these enemies before, and you probably figured out that the best way to kill them is to snipe them from a distance so you can avoid their poisonous poops. So you start shooting at them from the floor, and because they are tiny and you're new to the game, you're definitely going to miss and accidentally hit one of the blocks. Oh, and this is my favorite part! The enemy on the ceiling turns around at the edge of the blocks, which gives you enough time to collect the item and still shoot at it while it's over the important area! Oh, mamma mia, that's good game design. But okay, let's say that you don't manage to do it accidentally. You can still intuit that there's a connection here just by the design. The map shows you that this upper hallway is a dead end. So, hypothetically, if you were to circumnavigate the area and enter this room from the other side, what would be waiting for you? Absolutely nothing. The far more obvious answer is that these two dead ends are secretly connected. So maybe you ought to glance up at the suspiciously thin ceiling and try shooting it. And even if you can't figure any of that out, if you just start destroying every square inch of this room like a madman, you're still pretty likely to hit one by accident because it's five blocks long. It is foolproof. Let me make something clear. The point of this little exercise was not to make fun of this guy, though heaven knows he's being a childish prick. The point was to show you a little cross-section of the genius design that is scattered throughout the whole game. Metroid Dread is brilliant. It combines the best elements from all the games that came before it and polishes them to a mirror sheen in a way that feels almost effortless. I know that one dude's baseless criticism can't take away from all the praise this game has earned, but Mercury Steam and all the people who made Dread what it is deserve to be recognized. And in that spirit, I would like to specifically call attention to some major names that you don't hear thrown around that often. Creative Director Jose Luis Marquez, Director Fumi Hayashi, Art Director Jorge Benedito Cicharo, and Level Design Lead Arturo Sanchez Eras. Apologies if I'm butchering any of those, but thank you and the rest of the team for making one of the best games I've played in a long time. Thanks for watching, it means a lot to me. Go play Metroid Dread, my friends.